It sounds like you're dragging something across the floor. <laughs> Somebody's got some leftover shit, actually, from 4th of July. That is hilarious. Oh, holy crap. How are you? Who are you? Why are you here? Why am I here? Why are, why are I, any of us here? Why are any of us here? That's no, really. Why are why are any of us here? I don't I don't know. So yes, uh, and if you're clicking on the stream, you probably don't want to watch this. This is me actually raving about something I absolutely love, and I know it goes against the the ranty chick with the riding crop, but I absolutely, absolutely love this band, and I love the the movie about the band, and I made wa Rob finally watch it. Yeah, and actually, I'm glad I did because um, because actually, it's very really good, and it's really informative. And uh, it's peaked my, I, it, you know, let me tell you, Sparks is one of those bands that I always, always knew existed. My brother mm -hmm. brought, my brother brought home a few singles by them. And uh, yeah, I never really listened to them. Uh, this is during like the early to mid eighties, but um, really I had no idea this band had such a rich history. Mm. I'm going to try and get some, uh, some pictures up. So yeah, j just, just so we're clear on who we are. <laughs> <laughs> talking about i don't know how to pull up pictures on the thing so it's a little band that i wish we could play some music of what what, what are your impressions when you when you see the visual right there now this is keep in mind this is a picture from circa 1974 give or take yeah this is around <laughs> the time that um like i said this is a time and like I said, I I had no idea. Like I said, they moved. They were they're in L. A. They were an L. A. band. L. A. band. Yeah, that's that's probably yeah. Fair to say. Started were, off in L. A. Started in L. A. Uh, didn't have any success here, and they were yeah. Thank you very much for that loud loud, loud noise. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of rude. Yeah, my camera I'm motorcycles in, on this side. I'm in the middle of something here, people. You know, we won't know if they're shooting off a gunshot in the background if it's a tribute to this band or not. If you, if you hear if you hear me say "ouch" and then a a large loud thud, <laughs> me hitting the floor, <laughs> that's when that's that's how you know. But yeah, I mean they um they actually originally called Half Nelson. They changed their name to Sparks Brothers. You know, the label changed name to Sparks Brothers, and then they argued for Sparks, and that was it. And that, that the rest is history. And Disco Freddie Mercury, I disagree since they were around earlier. That's all. I, I would just disagree because they were. No, no, they were. I, no, I would say Queen, since Queen opened for them back in the day, I, I would say, well, when did Queen start? Queen started like 71. Yeah. So Sparks goes back to like 67 ish from their first recording. But no. Now, this documentary goes into all of that too. They go back into like the the psychedelic era. They go into the the glam rock era. Yeah, I mean they yeah they actually they moved to England. They became a glam sort of. I guess you call them a glam rock band, right? Kind of, kind of like ah, uh, they're so hard to describe. They're like that band that really only music geeks kind of know about i think for mm -hmm. the most part so they're just like yeah you know you, you kind of don't really even mention sparks if you're talking to somebody who only talks about top 40 radio you, you know you you kind of know like like if i were talking to somebody who's you know really big into whatever's the mainstream song on on the radio station today i wouldn't even i wouldn't even mention it i wouldn't even but you know, like you, you have a certain type of music connoisseur or a certain type of movie fan or a certain type of person. You know, they're they're definitely a geek band. They're a band that that music geeks, uh, music snobs, people like the people like in high fidelity would probably talk about Sparks. You know? Yeah, people who hang out at record stores, you know, people yeah. who who um people who are in bands, probably. <laughs> yes, first impression. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you yeah. knew about them because yes, they do. They are oh, they are actually pretty compared to Queen quite a bit because they do a lot of orchestrated things. Mm -hmm. They were doing you know pretty much full orchestra stuff before Bohemian Rhapsody. They were, but it wasn't like in in such a serious way. That's kind of why I thought that uh, you 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 had heard them or heard about them. So, well, yeah, like I said, my brother brought brought home a few um, a few singles, and you know, and he talked about them. But yeah, they kind of fell off my radar. I was, you know, I was 15, 16 at the time, maybe. And and uh, 
didn't think a whole much more about it. And, you know, and I always heard the name spark, 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 sparks. And, and now I find, I, I watch the documentary and I'm like, wow, this is a band. This is a band has a lot deeper history than I ever could have imagined. And they turned, they would turn up on in the Ramones doc in the Ramones documentary, uh, um, lifestyles of the Ramones. And they would turn up here and there, you know, very much in that scene. Uh, by that time they'd moved to New York. I think right. They they moved to New York in the 80s. Back to LA. Back to LA, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they they were hanging out. They were hanging out with a lot of the same people though. Well, so. this this would have been the uh, sort of the, the the LA era there. My favorite era is like the propaganda era, definitely. Well, that's my favorite album. So, Come On to My House, Propaganda, Indiscreet are kind of mm -hmm. my favorites. But I really really love that early stuff because I have such a such a respect for the early psychedelic stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have one album that's produced by Jim Lowe from the Electric Prunes, who I'm such a huge fan of. So. Because I love that weird, obscure psychedelic, and I love anything that kind of connected to that. And pretty much every band I love connected to that era in some way, shape, or form. Even though they weren't in like the drug scene or any mm. any of that stuff, they were just in the highly experimental sort yeah. of thing. They're very much an they're an experimental almost band with more well, talent, I guess. <laughs> they they kept evolving. That's yeah. The yeah, like like you know after after they dropped this album, then they kind of came back with this early early synth pop not even so like dance since you know new wave thing like before anybody was when everybody was still listening to disco they came in with that yeah my favorite my favorite bit in the movie is like said you know all these like there's these urban legends when sparks was on top of the pops allegedly john lennon called ringo stars says ringo ringo check out top top of the pops Mark Bolin singing with uh, with a guy who looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something John would have said. <laughs> well, that's what's so good about like all of these, like all, all of these sort of documentaries. This is like the music documentary that all of like the mockumentaries sort of like w wishes it was. I or wishes they were, don't you think? Because yeah, yeah like there's eras where you know, oh yeah, put put no put no words. Don't don't put the name of the band on the front of the album. Put it on the back. Yeah, <laughs> like that's such a that's something like Spinal Tap would have done. Yeah, that is a very Spinal Tap kind of move. <laughs> like, but they did it for real. You know, that's one of the things mm. I absolutely love about this band is that they're they're funny, they're fun, they're interesting. Well, they don't. But they're not like super unfun. Like I don't know. They're in on the joke. They're yeah. in on, they are very much in on the joke, and you know, in that way, in that regard, and actually, very early on, one of my favorite bands gets brought up, Cheap Trick, mm -hmm. and in that regard, they are very much like Cheap Trick, and that they were also in on the joke, the cool guys versus the you know the dorky nerd guys, you know, mm -hmm. and sort of like you have sort of like the same image, you have like the cool rock and roll guy, and then mm -hmm. you have sort of like the 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 dorky kind of nerd guy, you know. And like I said, it's the same sort of it's the same sort of image, but they were they were kind of uh, they they made it work before them. Um, yeah, Russell Mail is very much like a Robin Zander type, I think. Yeah, yeah, a similar vocal style, very like not not a not a really tall guy, not a very you know probably, probably wore a lot of Cuban heels. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, the vocals on these are like, they're so interesting musically. They're so interesting vocally. They do operettas, like full on opera songs with full orchestras in the seventies before Queen. Yeah. I mean, oh, and it's, that's it's, I love. yeah, it's, uh, it's really is. And this was such a well-made documentary too. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Edgar Wright really, you know, I like Edgar Wright's movies. Um, I didn't see Baby Driver. I, I probably should, but you should. Uh, You'd like it. You'd really yeah. like it. Uh, but it, it is such a well-made uh, documentary. Uh, the the scenes from now are in black and white. Everything that is takes that is filmed from now is in black and white. And they talked to so many people. I really wish they would talk to more musicians. Well, they did talk to musicians, Jane Wheatland, but I wish they would talk to more, you know, more of their contemporaries. But maybe their contemporaries didn't want to do it. They had a lot of musicians. They had uh, Thurston Moore was in there from Sonic yeah, well, Beck. Um, now, now I know what you're going to say about Beck. There's, a, you know, Beck does have his music geek cred. Two of his albums, I cannot live without, and they're on my desert island 
album set list and they're albums that nobody's ever heard of from Beck. Stereopathetic Soul Manure and One Foot in the Grave. So I don't mind seeing Beck in there. They had Fred Armisen who plays drums with Devo on the Devo, you know, uh, um, whatever uh, Devo days that they have. Yeah. Um, they well, had yeah. uh, they had the guy from Yo Gabba Gabba, the DJ guy. Yeah. I cannot remember his name. So he's a music geek. He's got some music cred. Um, they did. They didn't have a few musicians. They didn't have a whole ton of musicians. But you know, it was mostly like where would they put them? It was a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, you know, guys like you know, maybe like guys like Marky Ramone, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, what have like, you what have you been that influenced by them? Well, I probably knew them. Oh yeah, I knew Sparks. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that would have been an odd choice. Oh yeah, you know, well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, they were in, they were in New York, and I I showed them around, and uh, you know, they're guys from LA, and uh, let me tell what you, Lee on there from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, his choice of album he was defending was introducing Sparks, which was kind of one of my like, eh, I can skip this one. It's not one of my favorites. Like, I am such a I'm such a weird eras like they have so many eras and i talked about this a couple years ago when when i found out that edgar wright was doing this and i knew instantly and like yes edgar wright is the person to do a movie about sparks because he gets how to use music and mm -hmm. and fun and and the art of the filmmaking and inner like that's a you gotta see baby driver you'll you'll get what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. When you see baby driver because it's cut like a music video almost but not like super much but yeah. Oh, yeah. but yeah, it's so good. It is so so freaking awesome, and it's so freaking good. Yeah, I'm trying to look up jam. Uh, oh, I, holy crap! <clears throat> Rebecca well, Tour Extraordinaire. Holy crap! Thank you so much. I don't have the '69 pop up. Oh my god! But thank you so much. Oh my god! <laughs> Rebecca Tour Extraordinaire. Come on, I can't like wait for that one. <laughs> coming through like a champ. Holy crap. I've been, yes, ma'am. I've been avoiding Black Widow spoilers, swinging by to hang out for a while. We're not talking anything Black Widow. We're just talking about Sparks. So hopefully you're, you're learning or know about, do you know about Sparks? I would love to hear other Sparks fans because they are a music geek band that like only music geeks really, really know about. And ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I got it. Laren, let me, let me turn my pop ups in the background too so I can hear them. I ain't been no tree fitty. I know it's like they're still they're still there so we'll just do the thing we'll do the thing here I'm now, trying to pull up Sparks pictures too now for those like for those who may not be familiar with any of their music if you've seen the movie Valley Girl yes they actually have a song in it which called... is why I wanted you to see if you know yeah. who had seen it yes so yes. we know we have a mutual friend who actually worked on Valley Girl so I was wondering yeah, he, if you knew he anything on... about Sparks well um yeah, he seems the type. That's why I say he seems the type of person who would know who they are. But well, okay. he's probably he's probably busy now. He's yeah. a busy guy. I don't. You know, I hate I know. Bob. I hate. You know, listen. As much we as weren't going to go live either. We were. We were like. We didn't. We didn't know we were going to go live or not. So. As much as I respect and admire Robin Ryan Burnett, you know, I the guy's a he's a busy man, and I really dislike bothering people. You know? I really do. I but know. like I said, yeah, like I said, it can, I can shoot him a link if he if he uh, if he wants to. That's no problem. Yeah, if, he, if he shows up, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting. Well, he hasn't responded, but yeah, he's like I said. So, like I said, he's a busy guy. You know, I don't I don't like bothering people. I know. So, but you know, he's he's with you know he's with us in spirit. So but yeah, anyway. they had the one song of value. Now that was the first place I ever heard them uh, was on KTCL in like the mid nineties. They would play that. And that was another place where I heard one of my other all time favorite bands, Devo other songs other than just like the one hit, but Sparks, I had never heard anything of until Boom. they were playing eaten by the monster of love mm -hmm. from Valley girl on oh. like at one in the morning on Sundays or something or 11 at night. And it oh, was, um, uh, foam botch chicken. Uh, actually, I'll have to. This is gonna have to watch it. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, Blueprints had oh, yeah, Von Box Chicken. Yeah, he's uh, apparently he's familiar with them. Blueprints mm -hmm. is Blueprints Symphonic has said he just watched it on demand. Just watched it on demand. Yeah, it's on demand now. So that's mm -hmm. how Rob finally saw it because mm -hmm. I couldn't convince him to go. <laughs> You're well, it's not playing around here. Your sister is streaming. Oh, Vera oh Dark. Very, very, very dark. Yeah, cute little Vera Dark. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> shout out to her. I like her. Yeah, every, every, sorry, every, I'm going live. I didn't. We didn't know. I just made a no, watch this. Yeah. Like, we want to talk about it. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. 
well, this is the kind of stuff we never really get to talk about music mm-hmm. and, st- and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm I like, originally- it's my channel. What the hell? I'd rather be. I'd rather. I'd rather do what I want and have fun on it than like I can't. I can't just talk about the same thing every single day. I mean, I'm gonna have some fun and some sparking well, out well, in the listen, new territory, so to speak. We can. We can always get angry about movies or whatever, but you know, like I said, we we like talking about things we enjoy as mm-hmm. well. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is like I said, I watched this movie. Hey, I enjoyed it. What can I tell you? You know that doesn't you know that doesn't get as many clicks as the latest outrage bait. Oh, that's why I put no, don't, don't, nobody watch it because I figure, well, it's gonna be like no, I, you know, I don't care if anybody watches. I love that you guys do, but I'm not gonna like be heard if somebody doesn't care about one of my favorite bands that nobody's ever heard of. Like that is that is me in a nutshell. Is I am that person, right? Who won't be happy being mainstream because anybody anybody can fit into the mold and fit and and follow the leader but i want to do my own thing i want to take all the stuff that i love and and transform it into something that's fun that's why i'm popping in sound effects and visual things and Mm. finger snaps and blueprints and phonic i love you know (laughs) Ron is the choice. I'm, Ron, I'm, I'm, I'm on Team Ron too. I'm Team Ron. Ron he is wrote a, the songs. He's a he's a character. Oh my I god, he's, him, a, he's a character. He's a talent. He's a talented guy. He's a, he's incredibly. Mm-hmm. Disc- and like I said, they were both athletes. They were both they both uh, were in the, in the sports. And you wouldn't you wouldn't think it looking at them, you know. Mm-hmm. And but, yeah, you know. and yeah, Fumbox Chicken. They do talk about the Franz Ferdinand album. I hadn't I didn't know about that until I watched the documentary. So now there's a new one I gotta listen to because like the one song that they talk about in the documentary, it's kind of got a little Beatles feel to it, doesn't it? Didn't you yeah. hear that in there? Yeah, the I collaboration mean, and, song. and they went and they went through a period where they were they weren't they were just in exile for six years. Nobody would touch them. Which is just, and they just kept working. They kept working. They never lost faith. They never, they never got discouraged. They never, they, you know, they would just keep working, keep working. And then eventually, they had a break. They had a breakthrough, and it was uh, what that was the song. The song they released in when, Germany. Uh, they probably that, that's when they were talking about. They came back with when do, when do I get to sing my way? Yeah, when do I get to sing my way? It was a yeah. huge hit for them in Germany. Uh, and that sort of there's that era though that they don't talk about so much. That girl who they have in the documentary, they were trying to pump, uh, like pump her up as mm-hmm. a singer in like Europe, as kind of like a like a chic Euro singer. That's why yeah. she, like they they found her. She was working at a department store, I think, and they found her. I think Russell found her. That they they cut. I don't know if they cut it or they just omitted it for whatever reason. Probably for time and it wasn't really relevant. It was more her story. But she was supposed to be like a pop star. She had a, a couple of TV appearances, and they were kind of behind her producing her. So she was kind of like um like they she was a protege of theirs. Mm-hmm. So they weren't not doing any like in that era. They were still doing stuff. They were just trying to like pump up her career, and then they brought her back in for the <laughs> drums for a while. So that's like, why she was so attached to them too. I don't know if she dated one of them or not, but probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, Joshua Carnes. How dare you like something? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right, you entertain him. I'll show you how much I like him. Yeah, I'll be right so- back. I got a stack. Let's see if I can grab my stack. Mm. I don't know. It might be two trips. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, this has been a uh, actually, like I said, it's 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 a bit of a revelatory experience. Like I said, just in, you know, they, yeah, you know, the Sparks Brothers are uh, they're very prolific in that they they do so many different they've done so many different things. You know, it'd be easy to pigeonhole them. Would have been and would have been easy for them to pigeonhole themselves. See, I do not watch. I click at I click F the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we like about you, Captain Shannon Murphy. <clears throat> so yeah, but anyway, I, I, I'm um, uh, I wouldn't know about Da Vinci without you. You're my YouTube girl, oh, provocateur extraordinaire with another fiver, Kaching. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you so much. I didn't know about Da Vinci without you. You're my YouTube guru. Oh, thank you. I tell you, Da Vinci, Da Vinci Resolve is a life. Da Vinci's era. really nice, and thank you so much. And it, it has. <sighs> oh my God, that's a ton of CDs. So I'm missing a few. I don't have a steady drip drop. I don't have the Franz Ferdinand one. I don't have. Um. There's a couple I'm missing. There's a few. Uh, I don't have Hippopotamus on physical. 
Yeah, the last one I have physical is exotic creatures. But yeah, this is a few singles. This is a few. Yeah, they they're about they have like 20 some out. Did we forget how to mention how many albums they have? 25 albums? 24? <laughs> this is why I say this is the band that like the, the mockumentaries would never be able to duplicate their career of this band like before before which this album came out or, or one of these later ones they did 21 nights of 21 albums in a row in london live that is who this band is and yeah like, john yeah jonathan ross oh, says yeah I, you know it's, love he, he, he <laughs> feel he said he felt sorry for anyone who not you know not just when to go see them but you know not not just them but anyone would go see them all 21 nights Mm. <laughs> yeah, let me get on camera. I would do it. I would do it. They got a monkey. He's a chimpy. I want to hug a chimpy. No, that's actually Alex Kurtzman before the Dick Around came. single. Uh, this was back when they were putting like videos on there. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. You didn't realize I was like a Spark super fan. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, there's a few things I love, and it's usually obscure bands. And uh, yeah, so this is this is kind of when they came back on well, that, that gap yeah, because but, interior design, like they don't go into interior design enough. So important is actually really damn good on this album. I don't think I have music you can dance to, but uh, they, this there's the huge gap between that and that gratuitous sax. So yeah, my yeah my 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 biggest probably said thing is would be the closest I come to that is Cheap Trick. I mean, so I mean that's yeah. Well, I've got a lot of bands that just kind of hit, and they're all weird and obscure and Where's my glasses? different than every band. Like, I'm a huge Ween fan. So, I'm a so huge. This like... is my. <laughs> that's my my sorry, Rick Nielsen impression. I've got, I've got a few. Yeah, I got a few. Like this is this is the band we're listening to. This is their '80s period. They had one. Uh, they had the song with the girl from the Go Go's, Jane Weedland. Yeah. Who just love her, love her to death. No, she's adorable. Continue, continue. So what uh, era was most intriguing for you? Like I said, the early, the early seventies. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the fact, the fact that but this they... one's cool because it's the introducing. This is like I don't listen to this one that much though. The fact that it's they like, actually they packed it. up and moved to the UK when most bands just would have quit, you know. Mm -hmm. Just that fact that that actually that was the turning point for them. Well, this they, is this is the era you're you're talking about. Come out of my house, propaganda and indiscreet. Yeah. So now now, all right. Come out of my house is like when they kind of, I guess, took off at first for the first time with this town big enough for the both of us. It was just such an odd song, you know, which I love about it. Just like I said, and it just got me wondering. It just got me wondering, like when I was like trying to be in bands around around my around my hometown, and I just you know no band would give me the time of day, and I, you know they would all I would call for an audition, and like a week later the guy would wouldn't call me back. Oh yeah, we found someone else, and and if he uh oh yeah he worked he was bri worked out brilliantly. I'm like y yeah, but he he's been in ten bands that have gone nowhere. Yeah, but he's experienced. Y He's experienced, but he's a failure. Well, at least he's a proven failure. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks a lot. But it just got me wondering, like, what if, what if I moved? What if I, someone said, okay, Rob, we're moving you to the UK to be in this band. I'm like, what, what? It just gets you wondering, what if, what, if, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she's also gonna star in the movie, the drummer girl. It just it's like I said, it's just it's just a remarkable story. It really is. Well, they interviewed like Neil Gaiman on there. Yeah. Oh, I love, oh, yeah. the, I love the part where there where, where's Neil Gaiman and Edgar Edgar Wright talking about propaganda. One of like my my favorite Sparks album is propaganda, probably. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about how the outside is them tied up in the boat. The inside is the them in the back of the car, yeah. and then and then there's like on the inside sleeve where they're on a bed trying to get away here in the hotel room, yeah, yeah, the hotel room. And he's like, and, and Neil Gaiman's like, there's a story there that like somehow this is the end, and the end of the boat was the first thing in the car, and then they got away. <laughs> and then Edgar Wright's like, no, 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 it's the other way. It's and I beginning. think Edgar Wright's absolutely right that this is the tale, this is the end of the story on the front. Hmm. Actually, yeah. Talk about being uninhibited. When I when I do when I write in comedy or do anything, I try to be as uninhibited as possible mm -hmm. because it's more honest and it, you get it just it's just more creatively more rewarding. 
you know, yeah. like like the emu sketch. I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh well. She's like, no, fuck it, go go for it. <laughs> I told him, do the chicken, make them sound like chickens. Yeah, go for it. Like go, for, like I said, go for it. Just what a go for it. Emu is <laughs> stupid. It's a stupid idea. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it. I don't That's care. funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's funny. What I mean, what else? I mean, there was the other sketch, like the the Waffle House uh, documentary. Mm -hmm. Like, like, yeah, it's a dumb idea. Waffle House, oh, okay, but uh, I'm, <laughs> screw it, I'm gonna do it. I don't care. Buzzed overthinking, buzzed overthinking. But if Weeping Angel sends a Starfleet officer into the past, causing him to step on a butterfly, is that officer breaking Temple Prime directive? Yes. <laughs> probably, probably. Oh. Uh. Weird Al was in this too. They, they, they yes. got him for a minute. Weird Al, so Weird Al. Okay, Weird Al's song, uh, Virus Alert, is basically a tribute to all. Like, I heard that. And I'm like, oh, that's basically him reworking Indiscreet. That is him reworking Indiscreet into one Weird Al song, just like he did Genius in France for a Frank Zappa song. That's mm -hmm. exactly the same thing. So I'm like, I, I kind of knew Weird Al would be a Sparks fan the second I heard that. I'm like, oh, that's a Sparks song because of just how odd it is. And and he did the same thing with Devo. He kind of pretty much reworked one of my favorite. Well, it's Devo. I mean, of course, all of their albums are my favorite. But one of my favorite Devo albums into uh, Dare to Be Stupid. Because it was a little bit of, of like big mess and it was a little bit of this and a little bit of that and it was a little bit, it was all from that album that he kind of reworked. So that's one of the things I love about Weird Al. That's why I love seeing music geeks talk about musicians. <sighs> yeah. You know, you know, I was like, you know, when I was going to be a famous comedian or whatever, you know, I was going to. Peg Lake Pete, I got your box. <clears throat> your box. Entertain them. Tell them the story while you get the Hi, box. Robin. What's her name? Yeah, when I was actually talking about music geeks, I, when I was going to be like a you know famous comedian and be interviewed on sixty minutes or whatever, uh, I was gonna be doing the interview probably from a mu music store, probably from a guitar box? center. Did you leave it for me? Oof. Oh. Back with the box. I'm back with a box. Make sure, make sure you don't stir your edges. Don't doctor. I know that's why I put it towards me here. So you're gonna open that live on camera? I will. I will. Keep talking. Because before before I did com well I always I always had interest in doing comedy I always had doing that I would I would tell jokes in front of the for the lunch for the lunchroom kids in like in third grade whatever it was they were lame jokes but I mean they were I they think were that's jokes your problem <laughs> with your with so, like with Moon Knight's Edge is it wasn't letting you be creative well no but they had a very it's a it's a very narrow it's a very kind of focused I won't say narrow focused but it's a very it's a very Focused kind of, of uh, focused this is an medium. album cover of Sparks, <laughs> <laughs> and I love this album. It's amazing. It's so great. One of their best songs is about a cigarette on this album. This is one with Nicotina, right? That's another one of my favorite songs. But like, it's, but the other thing, one, right? but the other thing too is like you know, like yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, don't, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't do voices. Don't goof around. I'm like, yeah, but I, my, my Why talent. Not? My it's talent fun. is making people laugh. I mean, I like making people laugh. I like making people happy. I have to be more dead inside. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you. I want my entertainment to entertain me. I want to put a freaking sound effect in a video when I poke us SJ. Well, okay, we're we're kind of we're kind of getting off track, but I, I I've often I've often said I've often said you know if you're if you're if you're good with if you're if you're good with numbers you're called genius if you're good with you know if you're good at sports you're called gifted if you're good at you know music you're called talented if you're good at making people laugh you're called you're, called, idiot. you're called the disruption <laughs> no really really true it's true i'm like yeah you know how many times i tried i i you know just don't stop cut, stop goofing around I'm like but i i I, that's what I do. I make people. You make people laugh, and that's what these guys. They they listen. We're gonna entertain you, but we're gonna get. You know, but like, they're you, also you, so you pretentious have, too. They're like you, pretentious, but they're like, all right, yeah, we, we okay. We're gonna we're getting a little pretentious. Let's you know do this or something like. They're so. If if you didn't oh, have a sense of humor, it. you wouldn't do this. Really, no. <laughs> and it's genius in so many ways because. It, they they stand they stand out in the way that like they might be giants stand out. 
-hmm. where they're just, or Devo, or, or, you know, they're just funny enough that like, if you're paying attention and you get it, you get it. And if you're not, then it's probably not for you and that's okay. But if you're, and if you're coming in late, they even said this in the, in the thing that's like, oh, you like Sparks? You're new to Sparks? Here, here's 27 more albums. And that's what I'm doing to Rob right now. You know, I'm like, oh, you want to listen to this era? Well, there's 20 more after that when you get uh, get to where we are now, <laughs> which is great. I'm like, ah, I'm excited by something. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, so like this is uh, this is actually like I said a revelation. This, like I said, the movie just I love music documentaries anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of my favorite music documentaries is actually Hail Hail Rock and Roll with Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. That's actually great. But it's actually made by the same people, Delilah Films, that made the the music do the documentary The Complete Beatles. Uh, Keith Richards is it? That's where by Keith Richards he goes Chuck man sixty seven. You know, just like no way man, no way. You know. Well, because all that music's so connected to everything anyway, because you'd have one person who knew somebody or worked with this producer or that producer, or I mean, you know, what, what did you have? Like the, the monkeys are sitting there listening to fucking Robbie Shankar. Yeah. <laughs> like it just awesome stuff like that in the 60s, like at, at Monterey Pop. So you you had all these bands and all these this little all of these ideas happening that we don't have anymore. And I'm comparing a lot of kind of what we're doing here on YouTube. To a lot of the music stuff, because I'm getting a little too thinky and I and I eat too many gummies at night, and that's mm. perfectly fine because it's legal here. But I get a little too in my head on some of this stuff, and I'm like, I compare views and stuff now to album sales because that's kind of what what it is, you know. You're you're doing you're doing something to kind of disrupt the system. You're doing something to kind of change things up. You're doing something to go against the norm you're doing something to say hey wait a minute you're doing something I, that I, other people aren't quite doing i'm tr i'm trying to look up if uh pro jack douglas had produced anything for them because he, he was a huge producer in the 70s so mm. I, I i know he had to have done something with them i don't think i, I didn't hear his name i don't remember jack so jack douglas possible i mean he he produced he produced uh albums for Cheap Trick, he produced uh he produced uh John Lennon Double Fantasy, he produced for John Lennon. So uh 1980, eh, it doesn't look like it. Oh well. Really? How could he have not work with, with, with them? Well, because they were doing like weird stuff. They were doing like uh, yeah. Grand yeah, Parker. They're... There's so many, there's so many like different eras too. Like they, they go off in kind of this, like they influence so many odd bands too. Like, like there's this whole Euro dance sort of like techno y sort of the synths like subcategories from the 80s, you know, like Yazoo, Erasure, early Depeche Mode, which is basically Vince from Yazoo. That era was so influenced by a lot of like the early Sparks. Well, not even early Sparks, but like that mid era, that, that synth era of sparks which is like really interesting it's really interesting and then you have like the faith no more guys who got influenced by them and now like they're they're doing such orchestrated or they were for that little bit of time where everything was just like super orchestrated super i don't i wouldn't even call it pretentious but it's a little pretentious but not and that's like my second favorite album of theirs is in that right in the dead of that era which is little beethoven or Lil Beethoven. I love, yeah, see, Blueprint Symphonic. Isn't it good? That's like my second favorite album of theirs, just because I can crank Rhythm Thief in the car, and I don't care who hears it. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I, oh, you're going to listen to this. I don't care if you hear this, because it's that good. You know, it's like, oh. Yeah, and even, even when you get into, like, even when you get into plagiarism, you know, I was I was telling Rob like yeah they're glossing over the fact that the redo of pulling rabbits out of a hat on plagiarism is one of their best songs ever and it's just a full orchestra like it is just their song reworked with a full orchestra same thing with this town ain't big enough for both of us and which they which we, we you were saying should have been used in the Cruella movie it should have been used in the Cruella movie absolutely they're just such an odd band. like they did a tribute album to themselves. Like I said, Sparks. And then was, techno. <laughs> the fact the fact that Sparks was huge in the UK around that time, and yeah. like I said, you're not using them in the Cruella movie. Yeah. Well, they didn't know they were. Well, that's such a they're such a music geek band, right? I know. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Faith No More. Alfie Desane to the best. To the beat. Well, there's a, there's a rhythm to the beat, man. Uh, to, Dude, so on this version, Wonderbar. Like you don't get Ron doing a lot of vocals on these, but Wonderbar is one of their better ones too. Mm -hmm. Riding Cowboy is really amazing on this. This has my baby taking me home on there, which they talk about. It's like um, this. This is where they get a little little heady because you know they they do how they they talk um, about how like my baby's taking you home is just the same word over and over again, but the way it just kind of advances and progresses into this relief. Phone box, <clears throat> phone box chicken, uh, Shannon Murphy. The last message about baseball make about baseball makes no sense to me or anyone outside the U.S. Actually, that's not fair. Baseball is huge in Japan. And Japan is in Japan. It's huge, huge, huge mm. in Japan throughout Latin America, Dominican Republic, Cuba. I mean, I mean, a lot of a lot of Latins, like a lot of Spanish speaking countries. I mean, a lot of the best players come about a quarter of the players come from outside the United States now. Even balls is really good. Do they do they do a lot? I don't remember them doing like focusing too much on balls. But yeah, more than a sex machine is great on here. Shaharazad's amazing. Mm. Oh, Calm Before the Storm is really good, too. Oh, yeah. This is really good. <laughs> like, they have really good Pet Shop Boys sounding stuff. They mentioned how the Pet Shop Boys are like, why, are you, why aren't you going to acknowledge Sparks? But they did it first. <laughs> like, Sparks did it first. Everything, everything is big in Japan. Ah, baseball's been big in Japan for nearly a century. I mean, uh, yeah. We brought, it, we brought it there. Actually, that's an interesting question. Let me see. Hold on. Okay, but continue on. Continue on. Tyler, I just ha uh, hadn't heard of Sparks. Just looked them up. A few good tracks. Uh, there's more. There's more than that, though. Like there's the '80s stuff, which is so odd. And oh, they even they had who who was it? Neil Gaiman saying he didn't get under the table with her from Indiscreet. Which okay, if you actually listen to the lyrics, I think it's from the perspective of doggies under a table. Cause they're talking about like I throw a Yelp or I give a Yelp and they throw me a cutlet cutlet. Somebody pats her hair. So I think they're talking about two little doggies under a table begging for scraps in that one, but it's a full orchestra. It's a, it's fully operatic and they're so fun to sing too. Like yeah. they're so interesting to sing. If you're like a musician, they're so interesting to sing their songs for it. So. I like guess okay. Here's baseball was first introduced in Japan as a school sport in 1872 by American Horace Wilson, an English professor at the Kaisei Academy in Tokyo. So I mean, um, but yeah, they they like it because there's a no. We don't care takes, about baseball. We're talking well, about well, sports. Just but just like <laughs> but they the, the Japanese love baseball because it takes an enormous amount of mental discipline and 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 diligence and attention to detail and hard work that's why they that's why they love it so, so we didn't we didn't talk about how i first heard of them we talked about how you okay how did you first brother. hear sparks okay blue Fruit symphonic says the first album they heard was balls which is an interesting place to come in that's a cool that's a cool era because balls is so good right mm -hmm. first time i heard them was on that 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 late night thing but that wasn't when i became a fan i had just heard eaten by the monster love didn't really know who sang it didn't know anything except i don't think i even knew it was from valley girl right but that kind of went out of my head and it wasn't until about 2009 when i was listening to a lot of the xm Channel 30 Special X, which they played everything from Devo to Weird Al to obscure novelty songs to stuff like Vinny and the Stardusters and The Residents and just the most amazing, weirdest. They were playing Tom Waits. You know, it was it was supposed to be music that sucked, right? Mm -hmm. But it really was music for music geeks. They were playing They Might Be Giants. They were playing just the weirdest stuff. But it opened up this whole like, oh, this is what I've been missing. This is what I need in my life. And the first song of theirs that I heard on Special X was the song Achoo from Propaganda. Achoo. <laughs> what the crap is this? It is amazing. They, they didn't play it in the, in the movie, but it is so weird and it's so odd. And it's got that fast, choppy piano that it, it is so amazing. It's so like 1970s London British British like that that upbeat music that is so and oh you, they had me hooked there then I heard this town ain't big enough for the both of us but it was the orchestra version then they were playing stuff like I like girls some weird version of that and tips for teens and I predict and oh I was hooked and then I just discovered there's 20 albums about about it that it was 2009 so uh, I think exotic creatures had just come out or was was about to come out oh and I was just hooked because I love weird, obscure bands. I love getting into something 
every every so often I will find a band that I will just consume for like that little period of time. You know, sometimes it's like Rocky Erickson or sometimes it's, you know, whatever band I might be getting into at the time. And and for about 2009, it was Sparks, quite a lot of them and quite a lot of Devo. I came back and had another Devo phase a few years later, but yeah, to listen to the rest because they had so much. But no, there, there's always some band that, and, and I can't even compare Sparks to Devo because they're so not at all similar at all but they kind of are in some ways but not but yeah pretty much everything that i like about both was yeah blueprint symphonic first heard a song i heard from them was perfume see that's okay so they did that one did you did you ever see them play that on gilmore girls i want to say i heard I mean, they did that one on gilmore girls you mean you mean the future breeding ground for for uh for mm -hmm. star trek writers mm-hmm all right. What do, what do you have to say now? What else do you have to say? <laughs> yeah, the future uh, Gilmore Girls, the breeding ground for future Star Trek writers. Yeah. yeah. What else do you have to say? No, no, just 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 continue on. <laughs> I went off on a tangent and I forgot what I was talking about. What what else did you like about the movie? Did you like that it was a movie? I like yeah, I like that it was yeah. I mean, like I said, <laughs> like, it, I hate putting it that way, but he made it fun and entertaining. You know, he had little animated cutaways. He had little. <clears throat> I don't know. He was the perfect guy to direct it because he's a music guy. I mean, if you listen to any or watch any of his movies, they have you know the the music is cued mm -hmm. and timed where it needs to be. It flows with the rhythm of the movie. He has especially Baby Driver. Oh my God! He, he has Baby great. Driver. He has he has great sensibilities when it comes to music and selecting music in his movies. Mm -hmm. He really he really does. Uh, he knows exactly where to use it, where how it fits the mood, how where uh, mm -hmm. the placement in, in a movie. Uh, and like I said, the archival footage here is actually is actually remarkable too. Oh yeah, well, pretty much everything they have is on their YouTube channel, too. So, like, like pretty much, if you want, if you want anything at Sparks, they shouldn't have fewer subscribers than me. Like, I feel bad. I, I don't like they're no, they're they have a movie made about them. Why? Why? No, they need more subscribers than me. I feel really weird about this. Like, I saw that. I'm like, no, still after the after the oh. Yeah, mm. this town obvious. First part of theirs I heard from Box Chicken says, mm. <laughs> "He has some balls to rock the Hitler stash, right?" Yeah, they have like all of their albums on here, which is great. The um, they have a new film too that they did about. I don't even know what it's about, but they have. It's Adam Driver's in it. It's like he's he's like a. Oh god, I I can't even describe it. I'll have to get you to describe it because I watched it, but then it looks like I can't remember any of that. <laughs> like, yeah, sub to Rob too. Mm, also sub yes. To Rob. yes, yes. <laughs> but now there's there's such an odd band, and I don't know how else to to describe that mm. other than yeah, they're just kind of like that odd band that. You know about, but you don't really know about, but you kind of know about, you know? Well, yeah, you don't really expect people to other people to like them. That's the thing. Mm. Yeah, because, like I said, because it's like, oh, yeah, spark. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like them. Yeah, like, oh, you like them too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of, it's the kind of band you go to a record, if you go to a record show, mm -hmm. you go to a record show, and, you know, you, pe people going to a record show most likely will like them. Yeah, that's one of those weird, uh, like even even their newer stuff. I mean, I guess because it's so odd and orchestrated sometimes, like you almost have to be a certain type of music connoisseur. Like I said, this isn't the band you're going to hear on the radio so much. No, you might hear some no. other stuff in like a retro thing, like Eaten by the Monster of Love or something, but you're not really going to see. No. No, it's it's yeah. it's yeah. And like they said, are they do have a documentary. Uh, Edgar Wright did it, and we just I just we, I watched it for the second time with Rob. <laughs> they made him watch it. And like I said, the fact that like I said, it's like I said, this it even as music. Like I said, I love music documentaries. This is just so well made, and the little animated segments I like during it, where they didn't have anything to fill in those gaps, mm -hmm. where there would just be people talking, which can be kind of very dry. But that actually gave that actually made it a little bit more live. Like, oh, look at that! That's actually kind of neat. Mm -hmm. 
or he they, yeah they had like claymation uh some of the claymation bits and then they'd have like some just little little hand drawn animated bits and then they had like they'd put like the cutouts of the family for for you know reenactment sort of things and that's i think that's why i love that edgar wright made this because he i think he's the perfect person to get like the humor too and to get the personality and the life of the band so and i'm happy mm -hmm. that i kind of wish he would have put himself in there more and less like neil gaiman <laughs> Because Neil Gaiman came off like such a dumb, dumb, dumb. And I'm like, I don't want to listen or read any of your stuff or watch your shows that you were mm. writing now. <clears throat> because if you don't get little things about Spark, like Pat and Oswald at least got him. Mm. Uh, like at least I can respect that he's in it, even though he's on my shit list. And he's kind of a he's kind of a douche. <laughs> he's kind of on my shit. No, but he is a music geek, so like yeah, he, well. he is somebody who like Okay, at least at least he knows his shit there. He's like somebody I can at least appreciate his opinions musically. Yeah, but um, most people like I love to hate. Uh, oh. uh, I just I just I just hate. I just there's there's no love there. <laughs> well, I used to admire him quite a bit until he went kind of insane politically, but. <clears throat> and but this mm. was the Ghostbusters thing. It was the Ghostbusters thing. Now now keep in mind. The Ghostbusters controversy is how I found you. So, oh, everything's connected. It's all symbiotic. I don't know what I'm talking about. Have we run our course on this? Is that all? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There are they're arguing. They're arguing baseball versus cricket in the in the chat. Oh. I'm like, oh well. <laughs> like, hey, 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 let's all let's keep it civil. Okay, come on, guys. Listen, I can I can join jump in, and like I, I really don't want to, you know. The only good sport is Ninja Warrior, though. That's the true sport. Sasuke. Must have yeah. lost you again. Lost what again? Problem 16-bit mascot. <laughs> Problem music now it sounds like it been uh, all the sounds have been nearly explored. Well, there's always something. There's always something around the corner. <clears throat> well, there there are new sounds that are coming out. Just so many of them are just not appealing. Sometimes, like I was singing, I was singing today. Like one of the most recent bands I still love, and I'm listening to is Ghost because they're so, like they're they're very reminiscent of a lot of stuff I really like, but in a new way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit over here, but you know like i i do still listen to some new things but i'm still in that same like i'm still a music geek first and foremost i'm still going to listen to the most obscure thing just because that's who i am so mm -hmm. uh, anything else you got to say about this you've already lost interest you can't remember oh, no. you're off on cricket yeah well all right you want to wrap but, this up but like i said but like i said this is like I, said, I i really do recommend even just from a movie standpoint yeah, because but this this documentary is just so well made. It is very well made. It is you can tell everybody uh, in it who associated with it is doing it out of a place of really reverence and and love, and they really go into a very rich history of this band. And like you said, you think like I said musically, you think they're going down one path, and then they just change gears and they just reinvent themselves. This is a band that just constantly reinvents himself and by the time that their next record comes out they'll probably reinvent themselves again how well, old are they how old are they these guys they're gonna oh, be in their the 60s 70s maybe seven. yeah i think i think they're up there yeah they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty healthy they go to the gym they want they look like they take good care of themselves well i mean you gotta I'll do the math here do the math if they yeah they, the first album probably, is 71 yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're getting up there so yeah, you know, I, I do two blueprints and five. Like, I, I was telling Rob, it's like, you know, I gotta think about YouTube and like and compare it to the, the stuff that I'm inspired by. And I'm not inspired by some of those other assholes out there on YouTube, I'm inspired by musicians, I'm inspired by music and, and like the artistic side and the creative, like the, the creativity behind it. Even though it might not be like a visual medium so much, YouTube actually is, and I should really pay more attention to that. But I always try and focus on, okay, I'm going to put a sound effect here because I think this is fun. Or I'm, I'm like, that's that's where I'm focused and having like the most fun in YouTube is doing the stuff that makes me laugh. Like writing stuff with him, like saying, okay, bring in the super chicken thing for your emu sketch because I think that would be funny. And then he does it, which is great. And uh, yeah, like this, this stuff, this stuff is just so 
inspiring that, you know, I don't have to really listen to all the feedback. I can do what I want to do mm. and people will watch it or not. It's not going to be the end of the world if they don't, yeah. you know, because there's always going to be the next thing that they will. There's always going to be the next thing that they will, because I'm not that th I'm not that person that's for everybody. You know, I'm that person that's going to going to come in and shake things up and and kind of be that little I'm going to be that little earworm that kind of inspires 27 other people to do something way more important, I think, maybe, but or way more way more memorable. But I'm going to be that little earworm that kind of started something or i'm gonna be that little obscure band that yeah because that's that's what i that's like i would be so unhappy being like the million view million subscriber channel don't you think yes, well, going matter what. that's the thing that's the thing it's like i've never i've never considered stopping youtube every time like something smacks me back or an algorithm change happens or something like I'm just like, I wasn't happy gaming. All right, change it up. We're going to talk about star Trek now. <laughs> I'll change it. I'll change it up again. Like I started bringing cooking streams in yeah. last year. It's like, I'm going to change it up again. I don't know what I've been doing house flipper streams. How is uh, it's got, who knows? we might be a pet channel. We might be a Vegas channel in a year. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> You know, like it's, it's kind, of, it is kind of depressing. All those guys are getting getting up there in years. I mean, Rick Nielsen is seventy two. Mm. Robin Sander is is sixty eight. You know, but uh, hey, but these guys have such a rich legacy, and as long as they they keep going, you know, I mean, they just they just don't nothing deters them. And that's what's so inspiring too. Is like you you don't have to play by the rules of other people. I don't think for the most well, for the, within within some certain guidelines, obviously, but like. I there's there's no reason for me to be a copycat fandom menacey sort of channel. I don't want that anymore. I don't want that legacy. Sure, oh. I'll, I'll be one of the people who came in and started it and left, but you're definitely not mainstream. Is a great thing. I don't want to be mainstream like that. That really like this. Really, a lot of this stuff that I've been listening to and watching recently, between uh, between like the, the like the the music documentaries and going back and revisiting some of the bands that I've forgotten about from like 30 years ago that I really liked you know that, like a lot of this a lot of this stuff is kind of just really reinforcing a lot of the stuff and it's, it's revisiting like yes I am on the path I need to be on and I'm talking starting to talk like Brie Larson no I'm on the path I need to be on that's somebody else's fucking story out there that's not mine like why would I want that well, well one of the things is though that um like you said you know it, it's it would be easy to give up that's that's the that's the easy thing to do. Just give up. Like I said, they could they could be doing they could have been doing others. They could be working with other people. They could be, or you know, producing other people's records. You know, they could have transitioned into something else in TV or whatever. You know, doing music for that. But they they no they 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 kept going, and like I said, that one that six year drought that they had mm. from from about 89 to to 95 or whatever you know whatever it was that would have been like they could have just said you know listen it's not gonna they happen. could have gone grunge that would have been awful for them they yeah. could have they could have kind of done a little bit probably more in the uh that was like there's some early depeche mode that they probably could have sounded a little closer to later erasure mm. but yeah. i like uh i like what he says the what they said about you know we have 24 albums with current medical <laughs> advances in medical technology, we uh, may have over 200, two to 300 by the time we're done. <laughs> so mm. they're capable of doing it. You know, I, I, I don't doubt that they're, that they, they would like 21 concerts in 21 nights of their entire albums, including B sides mm -hmm. uh, and bonus tracks and all that. So, like how, how, how do you remember all the, like, I can't remember all of them. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that. That is, yeah, that's impressive. Like that's that's admirable. That's like I'm. Yeah, they. Uh, like I said, I was impressed when Cheap Trick did four nights at. Uh, they did <laughs> the first four albums, you know, and the and where was it? The uh, God, where was it? Um, was it the Knitting Factory? I, I can't remember where. They did a couple. They did some club in New York. I can't remember where. But I thought that was impressive. 21 in a row puts them to shame. Holy cow. And remember, they were well into their... Hold on, hold on. You know, hold, were, hold, hmm? hold on a second. Let me get the DVD. I got to find out where they did it. No, it's just somewhere. 
Ah, uh, is that it? Yeah, here it is. Music for hangovers. Yeah, that's that's uh <laughs> where did the heck did they do this? Four See, nights Chicago. Chicago. I got a lot of bands around my Chicago, kind of metro. Metro. Okay, that's that's a uh, I'm talking about right there. So so but it's, you know, they they do other they, they sprinkle in other songs, but at the same time, I think they did it. I think they did another one in Irving Plaza, New York. Sander Hammerslag is here. Hey, Sander, I'm listening to the show that is the same is that as not watching. Is that the same as not watching? No, that's fine. You're watching. It's good. You're clicking. It doesn't matter. All right, I gotta open this box. All okay, right, yeah. let me open this. We got curries and things. Marky Ramon is 68. So, I mean, I Marky, I thought they were older. Uh, Marky Ramon wears a wig now. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you could, you can tell. I mean, Dude, is he the one that canceled? Marky? Yeah. He's, he's the closest thing to a Ramon left. I mean, he's the closest one left. No, then they cancel one for being conservative. Now, yeah, you remember back, way back in the day when they had the. I, Actually, Sean Lennon retweet or tweeted this out not too long ago, a few months back. He's like, "Yeah, we remember we used to like, you know, have have albums that were anti censorship and stuff, you know." And he tweeted out the little the little censorship uh, CD. Well, now, album. yeah, like, now that's the thing I had, and they had the sticker on it that said like censorship is out of air. I kept it because I remembered that, and that stuck with me. And that's like one of the things. Like a lot of stuff has stuck with me for a long time. I remember, I remember before the porn, uh, before the porn uh, movies, they used to have like before the porn the, movies. Yeah, they used to have, back before they when, made them. You were alive before they made them. Oh yeah, before yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you told me it was a bit already a bit. Kids in the hall. I want to do this bit. You know the you know the history, the history of pornography, whatever uh -huh. it is. Great moments in pornography. You know, uh, Thomas Edison's Thomas Edison's assistant is wrapping up the lab one night. Suddenly, he's hit by a brain saw. I say. What if we use this? What if we use this camera that Edison invented to record people in the act of sexual congress? And so the first porn pornographic movie was born. All right, it's a box. Oh my god, this is like holy cow! <laughs> holy shit! Now I'm just like I'm actually taking like I open it, and I'm like oh milky things, and then I'm like oh shit, there's like a million things in here. Oh my but, god! But, but before, but, Ooh, I like these too. Okay. Before the I adult recognize some things. Before the these adult movies. Uh, these are like little rice paper candies, right? Boat yeah. and rice. These are but, good. I like these. Before the um, before the adult movies, they used to show like the Lincoln Ooh. Memorial, the Washington Monument, the Statue of Liberty. I'm not you know, our, our freedoms are are the freedom to watch whatever movies you want, and the privacy of your, your of your own home is under threat. But but it's like now the people on the other side are trying Cameron. to are trying to stop us from watching people watching Bigger. watching stuff, Cameron. you know. Tamron with chili. Yeah, everything switched sides. Did you notice that? Mm. Ooh, see this, this. I'm going to make some curry. curry. Some big curry sauce. The curry rice. <laughs> yeah, everybody switched away. Oh, no, we didn't cancel anybody. No, we didn't cancel anybody. They like canceled you. me and they know it. Brown sugar. Ooh, what is this? Yama Yamawaki Karinto traditional natural Japanese snack. Hey, co hey, cosmic. You know, porn is the ultimate act of feminism because you you're controlling who you know you're you you you. It's it's it, it's the ultimate uh, it's the ultimate expression of. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get canceled for this. The ultimate expression of feminism. You you're having kind of is. Yeah, kind of is. Nina, well, it was for Nina Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> no, it kind of is because you're not under anybody's control. No, I'm doing this because I choose to do it. Spicy beef and black nut soup. Hmm. That looks good. That looks interesting. Girl oh Storm, God, wish it wasn't. Girl Storm, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just reading these. Paste for vegetarian. See, sometimes I like a good vegetarian thing. Like the, the Hormel vegetarian chili tastes better. Mm. Curry laksa. Wow. <laughs> Dude, Rob, you're going to have to come out here so I can uh, unload all this. We'll be eating curry for a year. Curry. Curry makes you poop. You like that, though. Yes, I do like pooping. <laughs> 
my Ooh, first sauce for lemon chicken. My first, my first. Oh, let's try that. My one. first trip to Europe in 2008, they actually served curry chicken on the plane. <laughs> Got up the next day. I had you know, took Jack care of business. Food. Is jackfruit the one that? What's jackfruit? Hey, Mr. Roboto's here. What's jackfruit? Is that the one that smells really bad, or I, the one that'll kill you? I don't know. What is jackfruit? I don't know. <laughs> Look it up there. I know it's something. But yeah, I was so I was so happy. I'm like, I'm about, I'm about to go to the bathroom for the first time in Europe. <laughs> Too Ooh, much extra hot chili powder. Thai Taj chili powder. Indian chili powder, Rob. Ooh. Yes, jackfruit smells bad. All right. Well, <laughs> well I'll wait to try that with Rob. Make him come out. <laughs> so I'm gonna be too afraid to try it. It's the one that smells bad. Durian that stinks. Durian might chew. Durian looks like it tastes like banana, though. Ooh, these are, Ooh, I, rice. Oh, these I are like the sweet rice ones, huh? Oh, I, I saw bananas for like 52 I saw bananas for like 52 cents a bunch or a pound or whatever it was. I should have picked yeah. them up. Yeah, I gotta get some, too. I miss bananas. These are probably chocolate, huh? I miss bananas. I like bananas. You miss them? <laughs> I haven't had them in so long. See, you just need me to buy food. I, like, I made banana bars because my bananas went back because I didn't eat them. Ooh, honey. Banana smoothies. Milk. Ooh, milk. Oh, he's so cute. He's a bear. Yeah, I made the banana smoothie. Well, I made the um, pineapple one. Tutti fruity. Hey, Black Phoenix. How's it going? Hello. Supposedly, durian smells downright awful, probably. <gasps> oh, this is the good one. The extra hot. These are the ready mades. Oh, I love these. These are the good ones too. I have had these before. So this is one thing I miss about living near Chicago is that because I used to live in, uh, I used to I still live in Wisconsin, sort of kind of near where the quartering was at today, but not like super close there. He he was tweeting out from the Ren Fair, and I'm like, I know that Ren Fair. I've been there a few times. Like so so he was up at the Bristol Ren Fair, and um, if you go down to Chicago, there is a guitar center. Right next to Mitsuwa, which is, which is a Japanese grocery store and marketplace sort of. It's like a mall. I just want, it's got I'm, a grocery store and a mall. So it's got like a, a whole bookstore with everything in Japanese. It's got like a shop. It's got a whole food court and a grocery store. It's really, really cool. So they have like fresh curry and fresh uh, sushi and everything you could want. I want to go to Chicago Music Exchange. Well, and then you can go to Guitar Center too because it's right next to there. Let's Hello. go to Chicago. What's in there, are there any conventions there? I have no idea. Girl Storm. I live near Chicago. I live in Illinois. Baked bananas. Back to that same old place, sweet home, okay. Chicago. Mongolian oh, Mongolian beef. Ooh, Mongolian beef, Rob. Mongolian is that good? Probably. Shrimp crackers, spicy flavor. Shrimp stuff. That's another thing they have in Japan. Okay, I'm running out of room to put. So I'm going to put them back in the box. <laughs> Black, Phoenix is taste. Black Phoenix is in Chicago. Chili, lemongrass, garlic, shallot, galangal, shrimp paste, salt, green curry, shrimp paste. The thing is, Chicago Music Exchange has got good stuff. It's a lot, of, a lot of really high-end collector stuff, you know. Hot flakes. Hoff flakes, they're cherry. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not spending six grand on a on a Les Paul. Ha cane sugar water. Store in a cool, dry place. Do we eat these raw? Hoff flakes. I wonder. Products of China. Or are they fish food? Double geese. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Ooh. These are these are little orange um those are orange flavor. I've had those you know. Everything everything Gibson they carry it seems like pork it's from a custom shop. So this is the cool thing about Asian stuff is you don't know if it's like pork or this this could be pork, this could be sweet, or it could taste like pork rinds. Could taste like uh like uh cinnamon like super golden crisp or what are the golden grams? It could taste like golden grams or it could taste like pork rinds. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> you never know. 
All right. Oh, they have some English on there. Okay, what does it say? Wheat flour, sugar, white sesame, egg powder. Okay, so it's like a it's like a sweet sesame. It's like a sweet sesame flavor. Okay, so it's like a sweet snack. General Jelly. Sorry, we've stopped talking about the movie. <laughs> Google the flakes for later. See if you cook it. I will. I will. I'll Google all this. Holy crap. These look sweet. These look like snacks. Korea with red ginseng in them. That's good for you, right? Ginseng is ginseng's supposed to be very good for you. Corn syrup, sugar, gelatin, <clears throat> citric acid, <clears throat> bleached beeswax, pectin. Hmm. They made a. Um... Fender made a thousand it. calories in this thing. Oh my god! Oh wow! Holy cow! In this whole bag and it's tiny. Oh wow! Ooh! Oh, these are chocolate. This is chocolate. They made a freaking. This is chocolate. Glucose, sugar, oil, brown sugar, dark brown sugar, caramel. Maybe it's not. Is this chocolate. This looks like chocolate. See, I'm looking at I'm looking at it on um in um, pictures of it. George Harrison's Fender Telecaster made entirely out of rosewood. Uh huh. I'm like, yeah, now that's like it was they did a limited edition run of it. But like back when rosewood was cheap, they, they could they could make them out of them. <laughs> you're off uh, you're off camera now. Yeah. All right, I think we've we've talked about this as much as we we can. So, all right, let me try. Let me try one. I have no idea what this is supposed to. Do. Oh, it's salty. It's like a bitter. Hmm. Hmm. It's like a raisin. This is weird. Boy, bay, it's like a here. raisin. Let's be some sort of bean paste or something. Hmm. It's like a salty. I have no idea what I'm eating. It's not a good sign. Well, I mean, it's just sugar. Okay, well. Sugar condensed milk. Vegetable oil. Oh, it's really light. How about some robotics? How about some music? Oh, oh anti, anti derivative Jill. I should probably wrap the stream. I'm just like reading and stuff. <laughs> okay, well. All right, you want to play us out here? Yeah. You have to learn I, never turn your back on Mother Earth. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know that one yet. You have to learn it. It's like singing that one. Never trust. Never trust an emu. <laughs> they'll peck your eyes out, then they'll do that. Never trust an emu. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. It has been super fun. All right. I'm going to wrap you up. <laughs> That's the theme you're singing. That's his, his song. That's his verse. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for, for hanging out. We will see you guys later. Bye. See ya. I'll put this Bye. up for uh, I'll put this up for uh, members only in a little bit. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>